Uh, yes, as uh, Francisca just said, every year we prepare a report about the progress we have made <coughs> according to our strategy plan. Of course, the year of 2016 is not yet over, so uh, this is a preliminary report, but still, normally, I am presenting it at this place. Um, <laughs> so, the strategy, the Claren Eric strategy builds on nine pillars. Uh, we may have some newcomers this year, so I may just go quickly through them. Um, we talk about the coverage the coverage of um, uh, Claire and Eric as such in terms of countries and languages and so on. Uh, then we have the legal aspects. Uh, uh, con uh, that's on uh, intellectual property rights issues, on licenses for uh, our resources and tools. Integration of data, integration of services, uh, that has to do with the interoperability and how things work together across uh, Europe uh, and even inside a country it can be uh, an effort to make. Uh, we have the preservation. We uh, want a sustainable um, a preservation of all uh, resources. We have the ease of access. There should be no obstacle, no technical obstacle, obstacles and actually no other obstacles either. Uh, for researchers who want to use uh, data and tools. We have a pillar called crossing borders, and that has to do with crossing borders between disciplines, between countries, continents, uh, and other types of things. And uh, the sustainability, of course, uh, financial, technical, and organizational sustainability, and the user involvement. These are the nine pillars that we are uh, for each of these, we have a goal, and uh, we are reporting here the progress. So, I'm now taking them one slide per pillar. We, <coughs> the uh, goal we had set ourselves uh, for coverage in terms of countries was that uh, after three years, we, we started February 2012, we should have 15 members, and after five years, uh, we should have 20. And at present, we have 19, so I think we can be very, very happy about this. Those that are in bold face on the slides are those that came uh, since our last reporting, and that is Finland, Hungary, and uh, Latvia. So since our last uh, presentation, there are even there are three more. UK is still an observer and underway, and I'm afraid last year was also underway, but still. Underway is France. Uh, uh, so, uh, but uh, now I have marked it because it's now uh, decided and it's really on the way. We just need the signature and we hope that will arrive soon. We have a memorandum of understanding with the Carnegie Mellon University, so that's going to another continent. And South Africa, I want to mention that, that's also in boldface because um, last year we said that we were preparing a memorandum of understanding with South Africa. But now things have developed very well, uh, so that uh, South Africa is now preparing to join uh, either as an observer or directly uh, as a member. Uh, for the legal aspects, uh, we set up as a goal that all new resources that uh, got into Clarin uh, would use the Clarin uh, licenses. The licenses are there. Uh, they're on the website, everything is fine. But in the same, at the same time or in the same period, also other licenses appear that are also ac acceptable uh, so that uh, we now say you use Clarin licenses or you use the Clarin recommended licenses such as uh, Creative Commons or other things. Uh, and this is okay. Uh, the things that I have here in pale color are part of the progress report that we are, are writing to the uh, Scientific Advisory Board and to the General Assembly. But since they are part of a more technical presentation, I'm not going to talk about them. That's just to explain to you. I, I, I tell you what's in there, but I'm not going to talk about that because I think Dieter will certainly do that later. <coughs> Integration of data. <coughs> you saw it, uh, probably that we have one pillar on integration of data, another pillar on integration of services, 
and uh, um, but but it's it's quite reasonable to put them together when we uh, talk about them. So uh, the goal was to have a coherent set of data in good shape uh, for research in cross-country uh, uh, issues. And we had set as a goal to have 18 use cases. Uh, we have now 15 on the uh, Clarion uh, portal and many others on the national website. So altogether, it's more than 30. So there, again, I think we are, we are OK. But of course, there are still issues to deal with in, uh, in this uh, field. The preservation uh, pillar. <clears throat> it should be possible in all countries to deposit. Clarence should offer a depositing services in all countries so that all researchers can uh, deposit their results. And uh, this is true. This is possible in all countries. Here we mention those countries that have uh, their, uh, a, a, um, a recognized uh, depositing service, but uh, for other countries there are solutions. So everyone in all countries you can actually uh, deposit uh, resources. Uh, again, I use the bold face uh, for those who have, uh, have uh, obtained the uh, recognized depositing service since uh, last year. Um, also, uh, here we are mentioning this uh, need for data management, which is uh, coming up in all countries, at all universities, for all researchers. We have to have data management plans. We need to make sure that all data are stored and retrievable and everything. And this is where Clarin is in a position uh, to offer uh, very nice uh, solutions in all countries. So that's something that we should also uh, uh, maintain and we, we give uh, advice to researchers who are making um, research uh, applications, for instance, they can get advice from Clarin on how to uh, describe their data management plans if, if they need that. And then we also have a collaboration with research infrastructures, uh, with other research infrastructures like uh, UDAT Europeana, Open Area, uh, open air, Jean, uh, uh, Daria, uh, EGI, and Meta. We are mentioning here. I mean, there are many other things, but it's uh, but these at least are, are some examples. The ease of access uh, thing uh, mentions as a goal that we should have a portal. There should be awareness actions. We should have five centers of expertise. And there should be the first uh, curriculum plans. That's what we wrote in our strategy plan in 2012. And if we look uh, at this, uh, we make an assessment of that. We do have a portal. We have a new portal. You have all seen it. It's been implemented. We have, uh, you know, with various uh, improvements. And uh, there are things going on here to, to see if it works. Um, and the national awareness, uh, this is going on uh, in almost all countries. Uh, so that's also in a good shape. We have training courses, they are developing, uh, it's a good development and uh, um, it, um, we will get a good coverage uh, uh, after all. We have a help desk and FAQs we have on the central website on the portal. Uh, there is uh, frequently asked questions and uh, there's a long list actually. Uh, and now it's been separated in several uh, pieces so that you can more easily find your uh, question. Uh, and we have a help desk, uh, but also, and that's probably even more important, at the national level, there are help desks and uh, contact persons so that uh, you should be able to get answers. Then uh, the centers of expertise. We had set up as a goal five centers of expertise. Uh, we have six. Uh, and uh, there are more to come, there are more in the pipeline, so that's very good. But also, uh, I think there are still areas of expertise where you would have an opportunity to suggest uh, a new knowledge center. For the curricula, there are many single courses, and uh, there are some developments going on, uh, also under uh, the Partenos and Erasmus Plus projects, uh, so there, uh, there are also activities that we uh, are part of or that we make use of. 
the crossing borders pillar. Uh, yeah, as I said in the introduction, that's all kinds of borders. So uh, we have a memorandum of understanding with Meta. I mean, some of these things cross over, so you will hear a little bit of repetition. Um, and with UDAT, we already had one project. We're now in the second project with them. And Partenos, which is a collaboration between Daria and Clarin and uh, a range of other uh, smaller infrastructures. Uh, so uh, that's a very, that's a, what we call a cluster uh, project, and it's a pretty important thing for us. With the libraries, there are at the national level uh, various types of collaboration. And then we have uh, just entered in July this year a second project with Europeana. It's a small one, but, but still uh, it's important to keep this uh, relation and maybe to uh, um, make it more solid, uh, both at the national levels and uh, at the ERIC level. And we have this uh, Miranda understanding with Carnegie Mellon University. We are now discussing uh, what, uh, how we can um, further develop this uh, relationship. Um, because a Miranda understanding has to do with we are preparing something and we need to figure out uh, what this can be. And I already mentioned that uh, South Africa is preparing uh, to be uh, an observer or uh, a member. So that was crossing to the other continents, to some other continents. Um, and finally, uh, there's another border between academia and industry, uh, where we have the uh, Language Technology Observatory. Clarin participates in that. Uh, that's also an EU project uh, with industrial partners. What this gives is an understanding of what do they need, what's the kind of services and input that they would like to see uh, from uh, people uh, like us. Sustainability. Uh, we, set, we had set up as a goal that there should be a sustainability uh, strategy document and we should have success measures. Uh, now the sustainability um, effort has become part of the Clarion Plus uh, project um, and uh, we had already a first workshop with members from the General Assembly and uh, members from the uh, National Coordinators Forum. This was in June uh, this year, where we discussed both governance and technical and financial um, uh, issues. And this is to be uh, followed up so that we will uh, end up having something next June uh, that the same type of uh, people can uh, have a look at and uh, then uh, we hope to have something that can be approved by the General Assembly in uh, 2018. So success measures, yeah, um, we, we are measuring, I mean, this is what I'm telling you about, we are measuring our success according to the strategy, but there, of course, there could be other, other successes, and there you can see the value proposition that we have made also as giving input to the kind of things we want to be able to provide. And uh, we will list, uh, we'll make a list of uh, key performance indicators also as part of the Clarence Plus uh, project, and that will be done uh, this year. So, uh, for the uh, user uh, involvement, in a way, uh, I don't think we ever set up a goal. We just want user involvement. I'm not too sure what the goal is, but I can tell you about the assessment. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have measured 130 youth involvement activities this year, and that is to be compared to, you can see, the same number in the previous four years. In, in four years, we altogether had 131, and now in one single year, we have 130. So, this is really taking up, this is uh, really uh, improving. For the publications, it is uh, still a little bit difficult to uh, measure the uh, number of publications, but I think what you can see is uh, that in 2015, a, a major effort was made uh, to see, even to distinguish uh, between papers written by Clarin, uh, members of Clarin teams or other researchers. And you can see that now, 
Uh, there are more papers written by non-Clarion people than by Clarion people. That's a very, very good uh, development. Uh, for, and for 2016, it's still a bit too early. We have some figures. We have 280 papers until, until September, but they have not yet been analyzed, so I cannot really say too much about this. But I think there, again, we are, we are doing well. And the final thing is a visit to the website. Now, of course, you can't see, but it starts in January 2014, so this is when we started being systematic about this, and goes all the way up to September 2016. You can see there are a few peaks, a few peaks, yeah? And these are October peaks, and that's probably because of the conference, yeah? Uh, uh, but still, um, I don't know how, how well you can see it, but we are between uh, 3,000 and 4,000 visits per month, and I think uh, that's pretty good, and of course we'll see the further development after we have the new website and new uh, other things, so uh, I think uh, that's again a pretty good result, that's all, thank you. Thank you very much Benta, there is a room for questions, a few minutes we can take for that, so if you would like to hear more about um, the interpretation that we can be assigned to, to the figures presented or the trends presented, or if there are other things. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have information about the website visits? How many um, unique persons or unique IP addresses or something like that? Uh, so that you get a, a, a yeah. feeling of the community I'm that is actually. I think Dieter would need to help me there. Yes, please, Dieter. But the, I, I think these are unique visits, no? Peter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay thank you. Um, so, actually, we, we stopped um, counting unique visitors since mm. it's an outdated concept. Uh, you yeah. also see, for instance, if you look at tools like Google Analytics, that they also are uh, actively discouraging counting that. And that's since you cannot really track unique people anymore, uh, since they're using different devices, different IP addresses. Uh, so therefore we change to the concept of visits and I would uh, advise to uh, maybe have a look at the document. If you Google for Clarin and Peewick, you will find a uh, complete explanation about why we switched to the concept of uh, visits. Uh, Google Analytics called it, calls it sessions and I believe it's a more um, natural way of counting actually interaction with website. Any other questions? We can spare the time for the end of this session and move over to uh, Kunrad. Bente will stay on uh, uh, in this room, so <laughs> any further questions can be answered later.